there! I'm Panda Courtney, or Courtney, or Panda. I don't really care what you use, as long as you use one of those. Welcome to my channel! This is my first video, and it's kind of surreal. Working on this entire process awakened a drive in me that I wasn't expecting. But it also came with a lot of challenges, which I also wasn't expecting. <clears throat> I had this idea in July? I think, anyway. And I also don't know when I'm gonna post this, because I still have more to do as I'm recording this. But I overwrote my script in Word, so I could still be wrong about that. I digress. I'm just like many other creators you've probably watched or heard about. I've always loved watching YouTube videos, especially art content. I've always wanted to try for myself. So here I am. And yes, I'm aware my mic isn't great. I'm using my phone. Do not bully me. Please, I will cry. Anyway, to get a quick introduction out of the way, my favorite animal is giant pandas, who would have guessed? I love rhythm and puzzle games. I'm a huge fan of alternative emo, goth, and streetwear clothing. Still shocking, I know. I also like Lolita, cutesy and cottagecore fashion. I honestly just really love fashion. I got the old AHD bug and some other stuff. I get very nerdy about what I'm talking about and tend to over explain things. I'm very passionate about mental health and I'm a little everywhere. My emotions tend to ebb and flow, so I want to say this right off the bat that my voiceovers will probably change depending on how I'm feeling. I'm not super big on wanting to pretend to be someone I'm not. I mean, of course you kind of will because this is performative and I'm literally reading a script, so I am sort of pretending. <laughs> but I'm not going to force myself to have a bunch of energy if I don't have it. So I won't always have this energy, but that's okay. Just don't expect that consistency and the same for my channel. <laughs> I recognize this isn't a good selling point, but please hear me out. I have so many ideas and interests and I often can't stick to deadlines or routines. So I doubt things will stay the same or be super consistent unless my life changes, who knows? But we're here. Either way, I hope you guys can join me on the ride or at least find this video entertaining. Anyway, that was quite a lengthy introduction. I'm, I'm gonna need some water. Hopefully it's not too long, but yeah, let's get on with the video. So, Project Diva. This game has been with me for years, and while it wasn't my first rhythm game, it's one I've spent over 300 hours in and used to play daily, like, all the time. And when I say all the time, I mean all the time. Wake up early. Time to play Project Eva. Eating breakfast? I could fit Project Eva in. Eating dinner? I can watch someone play Project Eva. Or I can eat in between songs. Done homework? I'm already on Project Eva trying to perfect that one song that everyone else said was easy and I was so proud I aced the first time. You, gothic and loneliness. Late nights? Probably because I was playing Project Eva until my thumbs gave out. About to sleep? Oh, now we're back to watching someone play Project Eva. He's so key, I will never be as good as you. It was like I was eating, breathing, and dreaming Project Eva. It was so fun. I love it when I hyper fixate on games, especially ones where you have a challenge. And Project Eva is certainly challenging. Anyway, you may be wondering how the bad art fits into this. And to that, the answer is simple. I made it fit. But remember how I said I like to over explain things I'm nerdy about? This is the start of that. So buckle in. It's time for some nerd shit. Bad if you don't want to hear me explain the game and how it works, skip to here. So Project Diva is a Vocaloid Japanese rhythm game that was originally made for arcades but got transferred to the PS4. And to quickly explain what Vocaloids are, Vocaloids are voice synthesizers created from a human voice that are edited into a computer program to manipulate the voice to sing any song. Think Garage Band, but with voices. This means that Vocaloid songs have multiple producers because anyone can use them. For example, my favorite producer, Deco27, prefers to use Miku in his songs, like most of the producers. But another producer I like, Pinocchio P, also uses Miku, and they both sound very different. Not in a bad way, they just sound different. Like, try comparing Ghost Rule and Goddish, and then get back to me. In Project Diva, Sega gets permission to use... Okay, well, honestly, I don't know, but I hope they get permission to use many different producer songs and then makes them into a game. Moving on to the actual gameplay, in Project Diva, you use the directional buttons, action buttons, and analog sticks to play. There are four shapes in the game that correspond with the action buttons, and these are what you hit to the beat. There are also sliders, which you use the analog sticks with, 
and for some reason the game loves spamming them in extra extreme, THAT'S ENOUGH SLIDERS! But what makes Project Eva especially hard is the double, triple, and quad notes. These are evil because you have to hit multiple buttons at the same time. These are arguably easier in the arcade version since the buttons are bigger, but since I'm a poser who only has a PS4, I use the buttons. The most common are quads and double notes, but sometimes there's these fucking combos like the special triples that rarely happen, but you know, screw me up every time and I'm not mad about it. Don't talk to me about the height. There is literally no human way I can play this. Are you out of your mind? There are also fast chains, which you can dual wield the directional and action buttons in order to hit them faster. For example, in this song, you see a long string of notes. Hitting them with the directional and action buttons is way quicker than doing it single-handedly, especially if you're slow, like me, and can't hit fast notes worth a shit. And finally, there are hold notes. These are notes you can hold for an extended period of time to gain more points. And a fun trick for this on the PS4 version is to hold the note, then switch to holding the trigger. But that only works if you keybind your triggers to be a quad, and key bindings are a whole thing, but basically you can set any button on the controller to be keybound to a note. So when you bind a trigger to a quad note, you only have to hit one button instead of four. And with hold notes, you can switch to holding the trigger and still keep playing the song because the game counts it as you're still holding the note, and therefore you will keep gaining more points. This is what I do throughout the video, so when you hear a click after a hold, that's why. Whew! Okay. Now that the gameplay is out of the way, let me quickly explain the grading system and outfits. Project Diva grades by percentage based on your timing and hold notes. So, going by percent, on extreme, 95% and above is excellent, between 94 and 85% is great, between 84 and 70% is standard, and anything below 70% is a failure. And then for the outfits, there are many collectible outfits called modules in the game, which you can buy with in-game currency that you obtain by playing songs. You can change them whenever you like, and there's also a randomized module for specific Vocaloids, or for all of them. The game also has five difficulties. Easy, normal, hard, extreme, and extra extreme. Real ones know that hard is nothing like extreme, but I digress. For this video, I will be playing extreme. Okay, so hopefully all of that made sense. Now, knowing all of that, this video's concept should make sense to anyone even if you didn't know the game before. So, for this video, I'll be playing random extreme songs, and if I get an excellent, I draw whatever module the randomizer gives me. Got it? Good. Now let's get this party started. Alright, let's do this. I'm not doing extra extreme because I don't want to die. And the whole point of this is that I want to get excellent, and the highest chance I have without it being boring is to do extreme. So, let me see what happens. This is not a bad song. This is a pretty easy chart. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I didn't change the... <sighs> All right, so I've, I've already done pretty good on this before. So I have a high chance of getting an excellent. Let's just see what happens. Let's see what happens. Who Who is our piano girl? <laughs> it's his original! Oh my god, that's so- Are you kidding me? That's just normal Len! <laughs> Whoops, god. I have such a delayed reaction. I was playing this a little bit earlier, just to practice it, practice recording, all that stuff. And I got humbled a lot. I used to be- I, I played this game a lot, like, religiously. And, uh... <laughs> I would get, like, excellence all the time, so I got bored. I mean, I didn't get ex- okay. <laughs> I'm not, like, that good, but m from, like, nine stars up, I could get excellence almost every song. And now I have to fight tooth and nail, so I thought, you know, why not make a challenge of it? <laughs> to a very good start at a uh, 99%. That's pretty solid. I'm not mad at that. So, I got Len, and I was at first not the happiest about it, not because I don't like him, but because he has so many cool modules in the game. And I get the normal, boring one. The remote control module is right there, man. Come on. I mean, it's still better than his swimsuit modules, but still. Either way, I'm glad I'm drawing him because I was kind of worried this would be a Miku-only video. I mean, out of the 399 modules in the game, allegedly according to Google, Miku has 170. That's right, I count it, compared to Len's measly 42. Because for some reason, Google does not have that information readily available. Whatever. So in all honesty, I'm lucky I got him at all. 
Anyway, the drawing is pretty simple. I wanted to draw him looking kind of young, since I see him as 14, but I feel like I still drew him looking a bit older. Hopefully he still looks like a teenager though. As for the pose, I wanted to draw him doing something a little silly, like what a 14 year old boy would do to look cool. So I drew him flexing like a little idiot. This drawing gave me kind of a headache though. <laughs> Let me tell you about it. So my first mistake was leaving the canvas flipped. I started doing this whenever I draw because it helps me check my proportions, yada yada, no new info there. But because I had it flipped, I didn't notice I had also flipped Len's hair and Mike. And if you know anything about Len, he has very specific hair and all of the Vocaloids have their mics on a very specific side. I think it's the right? But anyway, so I had to redraw just this head. Thankfully, I noticed it before the lining stage, but literally, oh my God, how did I miss that? <laughs> But then came the shading. Shading was a whole different beast, but first I had to tackle those arm and leg bands. For anyone who's not used to seeing Vocaloids, most of them have these iconic arm bands, and I personally believe they're meant to serve as a way for Vocaloids to control their voices or the music around them, hence the mechanical components. But after a little bit more Googling, I found that they could also be inspired from kimono sleeves, and I thought that was pretty cool. Either way, portraying their texture and shading sucks. I have not been able to master portraying texture through shading it, and man, would I like to. <laughs> One day, I'll be able to shade any texture. But today is not that day. So, I referenced this older piece of a style challenge that I drew Miku for because I really liked how I shaded the armbands back then. Sadly, there wasn't a rhyme or reason for how I shaded it. I just mimicked what I used before because I couldn't remember how I did it back then. I say sadly because this is actually a huge pet peeve of mine. So many art content creators just go off of vibes and intuition. And while I also do that, I don't want to hear that when you're explaining your process or trying to teach me something. Tell me why you chose that color, why you chose the shade there, why you're drawing that pose, etc. I know this is incredibly nitpicky. I'm just a very logical person, especially in art, and I get frustrated when I look for tutorials and basically get told, mm, I go off the vibes. That being said, genuinely no hate to any art creator that does this. People are allowed to do whatever they want. I actually had a very interesting learning moment while shading this piece though, and I like to try and explain it to you guys. After finishing this piece, something didn't feel right. The shading just felt off, especially in the clothes and skin. And I've been seeing a lot of Angel's videos on my feed lately where he corrects his viewers' work. Shout out to him. Man, he is so talented. Angel, dude, I love your stuff. So I've been thinking about my shading in 3D planes a lot. And after studying some references of faces, clothing, and art I admire, I realized I needed soft and hard edges to make my pieces feel more 3D. But those soft edges need to be very lightly softened. I'm talking one swipe of the eraser tool softened, not fully airbrushed out. Because then things will look floaty or muddy and that's not the vibes I wanted. While that can work for certain transitions, planes, and styles, I found more often than not, less is more. I also noticed that folds tend to have sharper edges on cast shadows or creased folds and softer edges for transitions between planes. Think about how a head casts a shadow onto the top of a shirt versus a fold in the fabric casting a shadow on another fold. And then for softer shadows, just a simple like crease in the fabric. Another good analogy is the stupid ball thing that everyone talks about where you would soften the edge on the ball but keep the cast shadow of the ball on the ground harsher. The transition itself is softer because the light is curving around the ball and still reaching it, it's just softer. Whereas the cast shadow is hiding from the light almost completely and therefore is harsher because light cannot reach it. So applying this to clothing, I found it was helpful to remember where my light source was, how the clothing was curving around the body, where light would hit the clothes and where cast shadows would be. Simplifying things into basic shapes and surfaces made things a lot easier for me to understand them. For example, I imagine the torso is a big cylinder, and that helped me realize I needed more shading on the right because that side of him would be in shadow. Anyway, all of this is to say, I used that 3D thinking and soft and hard edges to help me touch up this piece, and I'm a lot happier with it now. And just in case anyone thinks otherwise, it is okay to go back to your previous work and revise them, and it's okay to reference your past work too. It's not cheating, it doesn't make you a lesser artist, and it's okay to do it. In fact, I'd encourage you to. Sometimes things slip through the cracks as we draw for years and years and years and years. And it can be helpful to reference ourselves sometimes. That, and it's incredibly satisfying to go back to a piece you didn't really like and improve upon it. It shows how much you grew. Oh, and also, for those who don't know, every Vocaloid has a favorite food, hence the bananas in the background. And here's the final drawing of Len. Look at him. He's such a silly little guy. I am very happy with how this came out. I think it is silly and fun, not too stressful to do, and it was just overall a good time. Now let's figure out who I'm drawing next. Well, anyway, so, so normal Len 
is the first one. Jesus. <laughs> okay, whatever. What's next? Oh! Oh! This is one of my favorite songs. Oh. Bad word. Yeah, I love this song. Who is our Snow White princess? Who is she? Bad word. You can't give me normal lead and then Sonic Miku. What? Whatever. We we might not even get her. We gotta get excellent. I still can't believe this. What the? Bad word. Oh jeez. Yes, sing, queen. This is such a good song. Oh. Oh, this part is my favorite. Scratch it. I like this part. What? Oh, bad word. <laughs> Bad word. Oh no. Oh god. Okay. Get comfortable. Oh god. Oh god. Oh god. It starts right away. Uh. Sh Bad word. The double that's next? Oh god. Oh, I probably lost my combo. Ah! Okay, whatever. I did. I hate my life. Yes, sing queen. Oh. Yeah, you're the Snow White princess. I just looked at I just, like, it- I forgot she was Sonic for a second, and then it clicked. Yeah. So, Sonic Miku is a module th that I got, <laughs> but honestly, I don't mind this module. I think she's kind of cute in a meme kind of way, and of course, me being me, I took this super seriously and wanted to make a finished illustration of sorts. So, after thumbnailing out the idea, I went to sketching, and my god, did art block hit. Obviously, no one is aware of how long this took other than me, but to be perfectly frank, this video is taking me months. <laughs> Each drawing takes about a week, and then another for editing, then another for script writing, except throw in life situations like job hunting, getting a job, socializing, surviving, sleeping, an immense lack of motivation and or direction, needing to find a schedule, and suddenly things get a bit more time consuming than I originally planned. <laughs> However, I find that when I have something I want to do, but I physically and mentally don't want to do it, chopping it up into smaller pieces makes the bigger task easier to manage. So, going back on topic, I did the line art one day, then flats, then shading, and effects. And what's funny is during this whole thing, I was fighting myself, thinking it looked ugly and I didn't know what I was doing. I've been trying really hard to work on my shading and lighting in my work, hence why I brought up Angel before and that tip I learned, and while making this, I just felt like none of it was working. That damn Sonic hoodie made no sense to me in a 3D way, and everything I added to shade it just felt wrong. Not to mention shading all of those Sonic plushies seemed so daunting and tiring, and it was, but I'm glad I did it in stages so I wouldn't chuck my iPad out the window and then jump with it. This drawing was such a piece of work, but I actually kind of like how it turned out. I can definitely see I need to improve and study more, but I'm glad I took it in the direction I did. I referenced some photos for the color grading, which I found super helpful and I plan to do that in the future with cinematic color grading, especially with this piece that has me and my besties characters in it, but I digress. Always use references, by the way. There is literally no shame in looking to others for help when it comes to getting those creative juices flowing. And honestly, something else I learned during this whole process is that I do not have fun while I'm doing work. Now hear me out. This might sound like a wild concept, but whenever I had to do work, like let's say write an essay in college, I would just force myself to do it. I'd take small breaks and push through, motivated by anxiety of the deadline or passion in the moment. However, when there is no actual deadline, like with YouTube, and I can finish this whenever I want, that anxiety eases up. And since I have no instant gratification, that passion does too. So what am I left with? And when I brought this up in therapy, ha, yes, I go to therapy. It's pretty cool, totally recommend, but yes. When I brought this up, my therapist offered for me to make things fun even when I have to work. So then it won't feel like work and I can get things done. And I kind of just sat there for a minute processing that as people tend to do. 
because I realized I didn't try to make things fun for myself. Anytime I had a chore or task that was deemed work to me, I just had to suffer through it because it seemed like that's what everyone else did and expected of me. But then I realized I had the choice of making things fun. And through my self-discovery era in college, which is still ongoing, we love a mental health journey, I know myself enough to find ways to make work fun. And I have just started doing that. And while this may seem obvious on the outside, it was super surprising for me. And it's not like I don't struggle with motivation and I'm suddenly super passionate all the time or anything, but it definitely helps. Listening to music I enjoy or that gets me pumped, or listening to my favorite YouTuber, or taking a break to play a game I've been dying to get back into. Melatonin, Fire Emblem Three Houses, Tears of the Kingdom, and Forgotten Land, I will beat you eventually. I just gotta pick which one to beat first. Or even just wearing clothes that make me feel comfortable and safe, sitting in my room with my star lights and warm lamp, or laying on my bed while I draw. All of these things are small, but they add up. And then with the added thought that this is for me, that I'm taking care of myself and doing the right thing, I feel better. And again, it's not a solve all thing, but it has been nice. I also realize I am very hard on myself when drawing. I think a lot of artists are, but man, that negative self-talk cannot be good for us. I should work on being kinder to myself. And if anyone relates, you should too. Anyway, I didn't expect this to become a mental health rant, but I'm very passionate about that sort of thing. And honestly, I don't see any harm in being open about that. And hopefully um, that could help somebody. But in any case, here's the finished drawing. I add some extra effects, chromatic aberration noise, little squiggles and stars. You can see the drawing. But yeah, moving on to the next piece. All right, what's the next one? Okay, so, so I hate this song. <laughs> um, I hate the note chart. The song is fine. I hate the note chart. And I'm not good at it. So, I'm probably not gonna get this, but I'll try. I will try really hard. Oh. Oh, oh, that was it. What a weird module combination. Okay, interesting. I hate the grading system in this game. I've only missed one note. Well, well. Yeah, this is not happening. Well, bad word for that. Okay. <laughs> you know, I'm not mad about it though. Oh, this song's annoying. <laughs> uh, if you like the song, no hate towards you. Power to you. I do not like this song. Uh, but it's not that hard of a chart. So we'll see. Ah, uh, but it's an ugly stage. I don't like the stage. Whatever. Oh! Uh, no. Okay. Um. So, there aren't a lot of modules in this game I hate, but like, the swimsuits are like, one of them. I don't like the swimsuits for many of the characters. And the, uh, the mech suits. Brother, ugh. I hate this module. Oh god. Oh, I hate this module. Like, what, what would you call this? You know what, I can look it up. Okay, so I did look it up, and apparently this module is a reference to the character Inca from the video game Valkyra of Chronicles 3. Don't know what the game is, I'm not interested in looking it up, but I do like the module a little bit more knowing that it's a reference to a character from another game. That's cool. Still don't really like it, still don't think it fits the game, and I still don't want to draw it. So my point still stands. Anyway, back to the video. I'm not messing up on purpose, I swear. I'm such a hater, I'm sorry. <laughs> I was really hoping I wouldn't get this. And it looks like I might not actually. We're gonna do another one. <gasps> I love this song! Yes! Okay. Okay! I can work with this. I love this song. I'm, I'm gonna shut up. Because I really like the song, I just wanna listen to her. But first, who are we gonna get? Who are we gonna get? Oh! I'm 
so down for that. I've never drawn Nehru. Oh my god, please. to draw Nehru. Oh. Oh, that sucks. Alright, you know what? Maybe the problem is I'm not doing the game early. We'll do this. <laughs> if you heard that, that was my dog Heather. She was struggling. <laughs> but it's okay. She gets a sniffle sometimes. Alright. I love this song. This is another really good song. I just gotta focus, cause I tried playing this a couple days ago and I did really bad. All right, who's gonna who's gonna be our siblings? <laughs> Yay, a swimsuit. <laughs> At least it's pretty. It's pretty on her. It is. It's pretty. And that Miku module, that's really pretty too. These these are fine. Let's let's see what happens. This would be a weird combo though. Whatever. That's the whole point of this challenge. God, this song is catchy. Ooh. Such a good part in this chart. No! Oh. Bad work. No, God! Yeah, but I'm okay. <laughs> oh, yay! That's awesome! I'm so glad I get to do <laughs> Jesus. This is gonna be such a weird combination! What am I gonna do? Yes, pass me. What are you going to do? Well, this one stumped me the most out of all the modules I got. I mean, a kimono and a bikini? How would these two even be interacting together? And how can I make a cool illustration and not a joke? Wait, how could I not see this before? Kimonos are for events. Bikinis are for the beach. Events can happen on the beach. What cool events happen on the beach? Sparklers. Sparklers and vibes and color contrast? Oh my god, this is it. And that's basically how my thought process went. I also did more research in the exact kimono Miku is wearing, and as a surprise to no one, it is not anything near a traditional kimono or yukata. It is too short and missing very obvious sleeves, and okay, I know there are sleeves on the actual module, I just mean that it's cut off from the like dress part of the kimono quotation marks there, but that's not traditional, <laughs> like you cover your shoulders with the kimono. Anyway, it's actually more of a cute costume than anything. And thank you, Google, for educating me, because I was wildly confused for a moment why this kimono was so short. But it's just a costume. In any case, that gave me more motivation for my idea in my imaginary made-up scenario to work. So basically, Miku and Meiko are hanging out on the beach, and Meiko is still in her swimsuit, while Miku either changed out of hers or didn't wear one to begin with. And then the two busted up some sparklers. Miku being the younger and more energetic one than Meiko, in my opinion, based on how I see the characters characterized in media, I felt Miku would be a lot happier to see the shiny sticks than Meiko would've. So, 
Real quick, I just want to address why I have such an ick for the swimsuit modules. It's honestly just a personal opinion. For me, I see Rin and Len as young teenagers, aka 14 years old, Miku as an older teen, aka 16, Luka as a young adult, aka 18, and Mako and Kaido as older than Luka but still young adults, aka early 20s. I see them this way because those ages is how I've always seen them presented in media that I personally like, like Project Sekai, Project Eva, and in the music videos I've watched. While technically speaking, these characters are all just voice synthesizers with no canonical age because, as Pinocchio P's Miku herself said, I still see them this way due to my past experience. So, back to the swimsuits, while Mako, Kaido, and Luka's don't bother me to the same extent, Rin, Len, and Miku's does. And this isn't to say teenagers shouldn't wear swimsuits, it's just the context for which those swimsuits are used. For those who don't know, there are some songs in the Project Diva game that could be taken as sexual. I mean, there's literally a camera shot in Nostalgic that zooms in on Mako's chest multiple times. And yeah, it's funny. But then to put swimsuit modules of, in my perception, minors in the game that could be used in those sexual scenarios, that makes me uncomfortable. And people do use them for that. I've seen it. So all of this is to say that's why the swimsuits make me uncomfortable. I know I don't owe anyone an explanation, but I felt like it was necessary since I brought it up so much. Anyway, back to the drawing. I fought hard with this. The pose was a nightmare because nothing felt natural or true to the characters, and in some expressions, Mako looked like she was in love with Miku, and that was the last thing I would want according to my perception of their ages. So I was battling demons, but we eventually got there. And if anyone is thinking, Mako looks like a bird because of how pointy and sharp I made her nose, same. Literally, same. It has been bothering me for uh, about a week, and I finally fixed it after the fact. Thank goodness I go back and change the pieces I'm unhappy with now. I don't think I would have uploaded this video if I didn't. Also, also, small itty bitty thing here. So it's been even more months since I recorded my last voiceover, and I may or may not have had a style breakthrough. So you guys don't know me like at all, but for my art journey, I have been kinda a nitpick. Shut up, I know you're not surprised. I would need to understand every little thing about shading, <coughs> cylinder len, and have become somewhat of a renderer. And while I do find that fun in some aspects, I forgot my most favorite thing in art, stylization and being fast. Cause y'all, another reason I held back on working on this video is because each drawing took like six hours and my ADHD cannot handle that. It's boring. So how do I fix that? Stylize more? and shade only what's needed, and slay. It really is that simple. And I have this super cool and totally not a plug for my Instagram app, Head to Courtney, monster prom fan art that you should totally check out and look at because I am definitely not showing it to you right now, that inspired all of this. Monster Prom does this really cool thing where it stylizes the characters into simple shapes, uses funky shapes for the eyes like trapezoids or half-cut circles, and only shades when necessary. For example, in my study of the style, I noticed they didn't shade dark colors. Why? Well, because it's barely noticeable. So what was the point? All they did was add some highlights and boom, shading done, and it did not affect the quality of the drawing at all. And while I don't have much time to ramble about this, and trust me, I could go on. This stylization realization hit me like a truck, and now I've gotten a lot more motivated and interested in art again. But basically, this realization meant a lot to me, and it was going to affect my art moving forward. I mean, it already has, so if this piece looks different than the others, or my work moving forward looks different than this video, that's why. <laughs> anyway, here's the final product. I really, really love how the sparklers turned out. And see, no more bird mako. I also love the half tones used within it. Bet you didn't realize they were also in the sparklers. Oh, you did? Well, excuse me. And yeah. Now we're at the end. I don't really know how to transition to the outro, so uh, I'm just gonna spin. Thank you so much for watching my first video. I am genuinely so thankful because I know it's not like super polished, but I really just wanted to get this out there and see what happens. Making this whole thing was absolutely insane. I have learned so much and definitely uh, cringed a lot, but I'm hoping that that'll get easier with time. I can absolutely tell I'm not used to recording myself and I can't fully express myself either because I still live with my parents and I don't want to be caught screaming in my room. <laughs> 
but this whole process has been fun. I definitely want to try and make this a series of sorts if people like it, and hopefully I can record the gameplay better in the future. Also, one more thing I want to be clear on, I won't just be making gaming and art content. I also want to do OC stuff, art advice, make some comics, and even product designs like stickers, keychains, sketchbooks, etc. At some point, this was just a series I've had in my mind very recently about a game I'm very passionate about, and I just wanted to give it a shot. But yeah, thank you again for your time and patience, it really does mean a lot. And I hope you have a great day and take care of yourself. Bye!